Welcome back. Yes, good I'm to see you. I'm very happy to have you here. I want to ask you a question, get right into it. Uh, obviously, you were critical of the president when you ran against him during the primaries in 2016, uh, said things about how he had an insatiable uh, desire for attention, uh, how there were things about him uh, that you didn't like. Uh, how do you feel like it's been going? There hasn't been a big change. No, it seems, it seems very in line with how we thought it would go. You know, my job, Seth, is to talk about the policy and, and always try to stay away from name-calling or personality. Uh, look, the country is, frankly, more divided today or has settled in. Hard left, hard right. Neither side listens to, to the other side. So all we're, we're focusing on now is the middle. Those people who are not hard right or hard left, and I'll tell you who else I focus on, the Gen Xers and the Millennials, they're, they're the hope for the future for our country. There isn't any question. They're comfortable with America's role in the world. They don't want all this conflict. They don't want name calling. They just want it to work. And uh, so I have a lot of faith in the Millennials. I think they're, they are the future, and they are committed to, uh, to improving our country. Do you feel like... Um... And it's community up. Here's the other thing. See, we're all focused on the president, okay? What the, what's the president doing? I mean, really, does the president affect you every day? What affects you every day are the, your neighbors, your job, I right? Can't, Those are I the can't things. can't stress how much he affects my job every day. Yeah. <laughs> no, for you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. for guys in I'm your an, business. I'm, yeah, I'm an outlier. I'm an outlier. Yeah, yeah, I'm an outlier. Right. But don't you think, coming from New Hampshire like you did, with the town halls and the, and the way it works, it should be bottom up. So everybody in this audience needs to make you think this is politics. It's not, okay? Everybody here needs to do something to bring some improvement where they live. Don't wait for the big boss or the president or anybody. You do it. Because if we don't do that, we lose the essence of what our country is all about. That's a very good point. I think that is... Uh... What about... You know, uh, uh, obviously, it was, a, it was a big field that ran against Donald Trump in 2016. A lot of those people ha were critical of him the same way you were, but they have since joined his cabinet. They have since returned to the Senate or the House and support him and his legislation. If you were in a position, obviously, as a governor, you have to deal with him less, but if you were in the House, if you were in the Senate right now, how would you approach being a Republican dealing with Donald well, Trump? Well, I think you know, Seth, I, I've been a, sort of an iconoclast all of my career. See, look, when I got in, my job was not to report to the Republican National Committee. And I don't think it should be a Democrat to report to the Democratic National Committee. You happen to be a Republican because you're for less government. You're a Democrat for X. But at the end, I have to do a job. I mean, I have to look myself in the mirror. And it doesn't matter to me what the partisans want me to do. And so, you know, my focus every day is economic growth, jobs. But there's another thing. You can't just have prosperity touching people at the top. Everybody has to feel it. So in our state, we expanded Medicaid. I want health care for people. You imagine if you didn't have any health care, what your life would be like? I want our people in the minority community to feel as though they got a shot. The, I, I'm sick of politics, aren't you? I mean, I'm sick of yeah. politics, okay? So let's... What I try to do is let's look at a problem and go and fix it. And... That's all you can do. So I served for a long time in Washington, 18 years as a congressman. Uh, sometimes I worked against the pres my own president and my own party, okay? So what? If I have a bet, I fought to balance the budget. I had a fight at times, the first President Bush on that. So what? I mean, there were a lot of reforms. When we reform welfare for poor people, I said, well, we should reform welfare for rich people and corporations. What's fair is fair. So if you operate with a compass, you operate with a set of values, the jobs are not that hard. And when you get heat, so what? So uh, for me, think about this. Not, we had the convention in Ohio, okay? I didn't go. It was in my own state. Yeah. People were like outraged. Sure. I didn't endorse him. You know, I wrote in John McCain, my hero, John McCain, a mm -hmm. great guy. And so at the end, people today still are angry with me. And this wasn't because I was upset because something happened to me. It was not the values I believed in. Last point. I wrote a book called Two Paths. You know, look, we have a lot of trouble in this country. You can either look at people who are struggling and you can, you can, you can make excuses, you can demagogue them and make them more negative, or you can look at them and say, look, you got problems? I, I agree. Let's go fix them together. So it's a difference between negative populism and positive populism. I want to give people hope. 